guys, today we're gonna to be doing a multicolor for Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. This is our last video and I'm so excited to be finishing out uh, the set with some of the most powerful cards in the, uh, the format and our signpost cards. And now that we have gone through the colors, we'll know exactly how much support all of those signpost cards actually have. Because if you saw our introduction to Kamigawa, you know that some of the signpost cards were more or less supported based on the number of multicolor cards in that uh, two color combo. Some cards had four multicolor cards and some cards only had one. So I'm really interested now to take a look at these and see how supported each one actually is. Yanks is on the call with us, and after this, we are completely done. Welcome to the last video, guys. All right, Yanks, you want to take it away? Sure. We start off with Asari Captain, our Boros signpost card. Three red white for a 4 3 human samurai. It has haste. Whenever a samurai or warrior you control attacks alone, it gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn for each samurai or warrior you control. So that's the, the theme of Boros is these samurai's warriors. You want them to be attacking one by one. Yes, and the fact that it compiles, like we have this idea that we want four samurais on board, three of which are giving bonuses, including this one, and then you throw them one at a time, making your opponent make very awkward and weird trades. And I do love this. We've seen samurais with first strike. That's going to make this very awkward. Um, you know, there's some good removal in red as well. So if you have a, a nice curve followed by a removal spell or two, you're going to just end the game very quickly. It is a 4-3 for four, 5 mana, but it does have haste, so that puts in some good work. And I like this. It also gives credit to itself, so it's kind of a 5-3 haster, right, for 5? Yeah, I mean, that. it's interesting because this isn't the samurai you want to be attacking. Agreed. Um, but that is, just because it has haste doesn't mean it has to attack. Um, so it's just like a nice bonus on an empty board. I feel like what it the the haste leans really well for the extra reach because I don't s picture myself attacking with this on five. I picture myself attacking with this on seven or eight as I top deck this and then getting in with the rest of the damage because my samurais have been attacking one at a time, getting in that incremental damage, and then eventually you're going to have chipped away enough to where you are going to want to make some sort of alpha, and this could surprise them with just being a, a four three haster. Yeah, I, I think this card is very good. Yeah. Certainly better than some of the Boros signposts we've seen in recent sets. Now, a lot of times we have split ratings because this is going to be very dependent on whether or not you have Samurais, but I think we're going to go ahead and just forget about the splits here. Just kind of assume that if you're in the business for this kind of card, you have the synergies. Uh, is this a 3-5 for the Samurais? Yeah, I think it's a 3-5. Um, All right. Yeah, cool. I, I, I like that not doing the split ratings unless something is like really extreme. Yeah, so it, with other cards, like, we split rate when the, you could have no synergy or you have a ton of synergy, but most things are Samurais and Warriors in those colors. That's what those colors are should be doing, so I feel like we can kind of imply that that synergy is there in those situations. Yeah. It's, it's less especially, obscure. Especially with gold cards, right? You can give a split rating to red because in a red card, because it might be bad in red-green, red-blue, and red-black, and only good in red-white, but we already know that for this card. That's assumed when it's a gold card. Certainly. Colossal Sky Turtle for green, green, blue for an enchant creature turtle. That is a 6-5 with flying and ward. You can channel it. Uh, return the Sky Turtle from your graveyard to your hand. Discard. Return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Channel for blue. Discard. Return target creature to its owner's hand. Okay, so it... Yeah, both of these channels are kind of on rate. Two mana pump spell, three mana get a thing back. Uh, what is it, revive or whatever? Yeah. And then it's a big, big mana dork for seven mana that flies and can't be targeted. And it's an enchantment in the enchantment relevant creature color, green. Yeah, it's fine. Green has a lot of ramp. I'm, I'm way less scared of a seven mana creature in green than I have ever been. Yeah, green has a lot of ramp. Um... This card kind of encompasses, to me, the fact that blue-green doesn't really know what it's doing in this set. Um, it's the channel colors, but there's not really a channel theme. Um, and that's kind of just the way channel works, right? They're individual effects. Um, but it's not like we've seen anything like whenever you channel a card. or um, So we kind of just have to judge this on its own uh, without any sort of synergy considerations. And yeah, it's just a big flyer with some flexibility. It's a good yeah. card. Yeah, which, it, you know, big flyer um, that is reasonably 
it's going to come out much more reasonably than we would typically see, which, you know, I think in the average set, as far as like mana support, I would consider this to be no more than a six, six, like, or a six drop, right? Yeah. So, so two key questions with this card though. Number one, does a sky turtle count as a sea creature? Yes, we will be taking drinks for this card. And number two, why in this set do fish and turtles fly, but not spirits? Because fuck you, that's why. <laughs> I, I, I'm just delivering the message from wizards. I don't, I don't actually mean that. I actually am your, your, on your side here, but you know, sometimes we can't have what we want, all right? Uh, I like this at a 3-5 because the flexibility of the channel. I'm with you on that. 3-5 sounds about right. And I don't think it's unrealistic that we're going to just play a mana dork and fuck people up with some giant flying turtles. Um, all right. A Ganjo? Yep. Yes! A Ganjo Uprising X <laughs> Red White for a sorcery. Create X 2 2 White Samurai creature tokens with vigilance. They gain menace and haste until end of turn. Uh, each opponent creates X minus 1. Uh, two two white samurai tokens with vigilance. Mm, those pair up very well together, actually, because their menacers or your menacers don't nearly equal the vigilance. If you're if you're on the attacking, if you are ahead on board, if they're low on life, this is pretty solid. Yeah, this is good for that one turn alpha strike, and then after that, it's I mean, you've still gotten a little advantage in that you've gotten one more, but not a huge advantage for what you've spent if you can't get through a significant amount of that first attack. Well, not just that. It depends on what your samurai bonuses are, right? Like, if you attack with each one individually, it now has menace. It gets plus three, plus one. It gets first strike. It gets draw a card. It gets whatever. Like, eh, that could pile up to a, a situation where you are just sending these in one at a time, getting more value than, you know, because they have to double block your menacer, right? And you're now you're trading two for one or whatever the case may be. You're getting some good value. They only have menace that first turn. Oh, poo. I thought they have they have vigilance all the whole time. They only gain menace and haste that first turn. I see. I thought for some reason theirs had yours had menace and theirs had vigilance. Ah, I still like it. It's fine. That's a fine card. Um because you're gonna, you know, if you make five tokens and give them four, they can only block two of yours in that first attack, so you're at least getting six through at least on these creatures alone. Yeah, and you also have to assume that your samurais, the, even the ones that don't die, or, or even if you choose, like, you can't attack, like, let's say they have more creatures than you for whatever reason, even though you're in Boros and you're completely doing your job wrong. But let's pretend that they have more creatures and you can't safely attack with these. Um, I think the idea is that you then send them in one at a time and they're getting those incremental bonuses from across the board. Yeah, I'm pretty unhappy if that's the case, because I probably put a decent amount of mana in to just get a 2-2 that can attack one one at a time over a bunch of turns. Yeah, I mean, some of those bonuses were kind of insane. Like, wasn't one of them, yeah. like, whenever your dude attacks, get an artifact or whatever from the graveyard? I mean, sure, if I have a great board already and I draw my own color rare, I'm happy. I mean, Well, I that, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> like that's a pretty... Uh, yeah, in the best scenario, sure. The scenario I'm describing is a good board with warrior samurai cards that are enabling that that is exactly what they that deck wants to be doing i am indeed describing a well-rounded samurai board not just attacking one at a time with a vigilance 2-2 into the 2-2 vigilance that you gave them <laughs> i just think that there will be a time where those incremental bonuses will be worth it um yeah i think this is kind of what i want to be doing in these colors it's an on-color bomb this is a 3-5 with some upside can win games yeah, I think I have it as a three. All right, we have a 2-2 two, two flyer for two. Artifact spells cost one colorless less. Yeah, this card's great. Yeah, plenty of artifacts in blue-red. That's what is it wants to be doing in this set. It's fine. Nothing's, nothing amazing, but it's a fine enabler. I mean... And, ch and in two mana, 2-2 two, two flyer is good, so... Yes, that is what I was going to say. <laughs> Usually we're okay with like three mana, two, two flyers. And that's a little bit more restricted because you need both colors, but I think that's also fine. So I think this is probably a three for me. Yeah, that's what I have it at. All right, Gloom. Gloom Shrieker, three mana, two, one, Cat Beast Enchantment. 
there's so many X ones. Goodness gracious. Uh, it has a menace that whenever it enters battlefield, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. If this would die, if Gloom Shrieker would die, exile it instead. Okay, this seems great. Yeah, a little bit kind of like blue green. Black green's theme is pretty weak. Um, there just wasn't a ton. I mean, there was some mill, some self mill, very little bit, but it didn't seem, you know, overly supported. Uh, but on its own, it's a good card. Agreed. Just getting a card back, like, it's a little overcosted. A 2 1 Menacer for two would be fine. This extra one mana for any card I want out of my graveyard? Turn target permanent card. Yeah. Yeah, you can't get a spell, but you can yeah. get an artifact or an enchantment. I like card advantage. Yeah, it's a good card. It, I feel like it's actually better in the late game, which is kind of crazy. Oh, it's much better in the late game. Yeah. Well, so at, this... least, at least the mid game. Agreed. It feels a little bit better than a three, but I am hesitant to give it a three five. Yeah, I think it's a three on the higher end, but it's a three. All right, I'll let you take this one. Grease Fang Okiba Boss. Uh, this is your Orzov rare, one white and a black for a four three legendary rat pilot. At the beginning of combat on your turn, return target vehicle card from your graveyard to the battlefield, gains haste, and return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of your next end step. Um, this card's fine. Uh, I mean, it's it's way over rate at a four three for three, so it's good on its own. Um, you're only getting value if you already have vehicles in your yard, uh, which is rather specific. And note, it doesn't crew those vehicles. Like it doesn't; those vehicles don't turn into artifact creatures. Right? They still need to be crewed. Uh, yeah, but you can still crew them, right? Like they go on the stack at the beginning of combat, and then you can use it to crew, and then attack ideally they're trading with it or whatever and then you can rinse and repeat which is kind of neat yeah yeah it's 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 fine it's it's more just whether or not you just have to get that vehicle into the yard to start with and the funny thing is is white black was sort of the enchantment and artifact type mechanics so you're definitely going to have some vehicles but most of the vehicle support was in blue blue white right, was yeah. kind of the vehicle right the the white yeah. lord is vehicle oriented yeah, the the white, blue. blue. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, we'll see in a little bit. Is very vehicle centric. So now we're having is this a, sort of is a vehicle. <laughs> sort of three oh. color vehicle shared thing. But yeah, I don't think black had a ton of it. So I'm kind of surprised yeah. to see this. I'm scrolling through right now. I see. I only see two vehicles in white. Um, and then in black, we've got one, maybe. Yeah, so I don't like this particular in this color. I'm wondering if this is like a, an Azorius Splash Black and you get to use this and Premium Black removal. That's going to be a spicy deck. Yeah, no, there are, we'll, and we'll get to them. Uh, in a, we have them in a different video. There are six colorless vehicles. Yeah, that's a lot. So. But usually the colorless vehicles, I think, are not as good, typically. But we'll see. Um, all right, let's go ahead and give this guy a rating. On its own, it's great, right? Yeah, I think this card's probably a 3-5 with upside. If you have no vehicles, and I'm worried if you're exactly an Orzhov, you will have likely very few, it's a 3. Like a... Well, let, let's say, hypothetically, a 3-mana 4-3 with no keywords, no text. What is that? Is that a 2? It's at least a 3. Yeah, I think... I think so, because I think like a 3-3 three, three for 3 is like that 2-5 range. Yeah. Um, so this is a 3 on its face with no text, and then it's got some upside. So yeah. there's three on-color things. I feel like the synergy is going to be pretty minor. So eh, I have to see the colorless, but I, I'm tempted to just give it a 3 and just talk infinitely about its synergistic upsides. Yeah. If this was That's in... That's... Go ahead. That's reasonable as well. I mean, it's the it's just how much of the upside do you bake into the rating or just talk or just talk about. I think if this was in Azorius, this would be close to a four. Just because yeah. that's the color pairing that wants to be doing this heavy, heavy uh, lifting. But there are dual lands, you know, the, the, the splashing this in that is not going to be unrealistic. 
Yeah, I think this was if this was an Azorius, it would cost at least one more mana. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Um, all right, three mana for a legendary saga. First chapter, destroy each non-land permanent with mana value one or less. Okay, not going to do a ton. Exile all graveyards. Again, not doing a ton. On the backside, we have a 3-3 three, three Trampler. Uh, whenever all of this text deals combat damage, or deals damage, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, when all of this text deals damage to a player, if it has dealt 10 or more damage to that player this turn, they lose the game. Okay, so it, it it's an EDH card for life gain decks? What do you mean? Like, you know, those, cra those life crazy life, life gain decks and EDH and stuff. For anti-life to be anti-life. Yeah, yeah, so it's an EDH yeah, yeah. deck targeting those decks where it's like this second clause is going to be super relevant. I feel like if this thing does combat damage seven times and survives and then hits them, if they're not freaking dead, I will cry and never play magic ever again. Yeah, I mean, I guess if there's... Well, it has trample even. So I was going to say if there was some like infinite jump blockers or something, but it tramples over them. Mm -hmm. um, like that's a lot of text yeah. for a limited player. Yeah, I'm kind of ignoring that last paragraph. Agreed. That, yeah, that's yeah. where I'm getting for sure. Um, yeah. yeah, I think this is a 3-3 three, three for 3 with Trample that gets bigger each time you do a thing with it. Yeah, the first two chapters are actually quite awful for a Mythic. Um, I think that's more relevant for Constructed, for sure. The one mana permanence, exile graveyards. There's a lot of recursion here for artifacts, so it could be relevant. But whether if you're playing this on 3, that's not going to be, be very helpful. And 3 is where you want to be playing this because the backside is so aggressive. Yeah, it, you know, it wipes out tokens, which is nice. Um, but that's about it. We're not seeing a ton of token generation. There was some in the Samurais. There was yeah, like the pilot there were, generator. There, were, there was one goblin token generator, and that's kind of it. There were a couple uh, mana dork tokens in green. Oh, it kills the it kills the the green four green uh, spell. It kills those yeah. four fives. <laughs> It kills those four fives. It kills like the the one mana things we saw in red. So it does kill some stuff that's relevant, but not a lot. Uh, red sure. red did have two. It says non land permanent. So this is going to kill whether they're equipped or not. The bunny yep. and the other idiot. Yep. Right there was well, the other, a monkey. The other, idiot, the other idiot's always back in your hand on their turn. So <laughs> the monkey. Oh, I was thinking that the one mana two two. Oh, yeah, we're, we're, not, we're not playing that idiot. No, I'm talking about the monkey. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does kill that as well. Um, okay, so, I mean, it's got some targets. It's fine. The backside is kind of a beast for three mana, albeit a little slow. So this is like a four? Uh, yeah, I bet you it's like a three, five. I, I also yeah. wanted to lean low, but, like, yeah, the ability seems good if you get if you can get hits in. Once this turns into a four, four, it's kind of going to snowball, but it, got, it has to get there. Yeah, I'm... I'm not that this is relevant for this conversation, but I'm more interested to see if this shows up in Legacy or Vintage. Um, blowing up Moxon, or just blowing up, you know, cheap one drops. Like Delvers. All right, let's go ahead and move on. We have a uh, ginormous 4-4 uh, four, four for 4, Flying and Trample. Spells you cost, cast one less for each... Uh, for... wait, for each target... Okay, and then spells your opponent's cast cost one more to cast for each target. So pump spells, fight spells, removal spells, that's what these are for. But it's a good creature on its own. Are we, are we splashing for this if we're two colors? I think so. I mean, 4-4 four, four flying trample is nuts. Um, that's relatively hard to kill because it's going to at least, you know, make them pay one more than they're planning on. Yeah, it really sets them off. Now, if it is a splash color, we can't imagine we're playing this on turn four, but no. if you ever get to, it's going to be great. Yeah, I don't think there's... I haven't seen... I, I didn't really look back, but I haven't seen anything in the set that I can remember that has multiple targets. Your fight spell. Oh, that's true. But that's green, so now you're into a fourth color. Well, it's for your opponent. Their stuff costs one. Um, more. Yeah, I'm, yeah, that's true. I'm thinking of our own. So this is um, gonna this is gonna fuck up their their that's spell. True. Good point. 
Yeah, this is strong if you can, you know, feasibly do the mana base. We're, we're happy with this. Um, whether or not it helps you, it's going to depend on if you have white removal, red burn. Uh, it, you know, it helps with your counter spells. It's going to make those cheaper. Uh, and it's going to set your opponent off. So it, I think this is a good card if you can make the mana, mana work reliably. And I don't think that's going to take a ton of work. And not being green is is detrimental, but we, do, we have dual lands, which are... Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, are these common? Yes, they're, they're common. Yeah, we have common duels, so we're fine here. This is a four, because it doesn't leave a yeah. huge lasting effect on the board. Yeah, I've got it as a four. All right, we have the Hot Springs. I'll let you take this one. Invigorating Hot Spring. This is your Gruul signpost card, one red and a green enchantment. Invigor invigorating Hot Spring enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it. Modified creatures you can draw of haste. You can remove a plus one plus one counter from this to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Activate only as a sorcery and only once each turn. Okay, so this gives things haste. It lets you modify four creatures. It adds four power to the board over time for three mana and an enchantment in the green enchantment colors. This is fine. And it's got a monkey in a hot tub. <laughs> it does have a monkey in a hot tub. I like the little, like, wispy spirit birds that come off of it, too. Yeah, yeah I... see? Spirits, they fly. They're birds. <laughs> oh, poor Yanks. <laughs> uh, invigorating Hot Springs. It does everything that we want to do. It's just so slow. And uh, that's, you know, how good this is is going to depend highly on how quick the format is. And I feel like you play this, it, gonna, it can win, help win you the long game, or you could play this and they could just run you over because you did nothing on turn three. And heaven help you if you didn't play a two drop, right? Like, eh. Yeah, I'm ideally not looking to play this on three. No. Um, I want to play this on like five with a two drop or something. Um, yeah, I think this card's like a three. Agreed, and, and they're worse in multiples. Yep, yeah, oh, definitely. All right, two heavens is one. We got some Mardu human samurai action. If a creature attacking causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Oh, oh yes, please give me in my samurai deck. I will splash this all day long. Oh my gosh. It's a great rate, difficult to cast for sure, but like, yes, please. I, I love me some Mardu. Yeah, double all your attacking triggers. Seems pretty great. Yep, this is phenomenal. Phenomenal, I love it. Um, what, uh, what, what are you thinking rating-wise? Uh, I think it's like a 3-5. Um, it's really good. That mana cost is tough for something you do want to be playing early in a fairly aggressive deck. Um, but I'm also kind of happy to play it late, too, because once you've added a few of those bonus, then you play it late, you're going to get multiple triggers on two or three bonuses. Feels fine. Yeah, it's not it's not bad to play late, um, yeah. for sure. Uh, now, it yeah, gets answered it, right away, but I think this can win a game if it's left unmolested in a, in a samurai deck. It can. Um, I'm thinking about it compared to the Jeskai one we saw and. I guess the reason I docked this a little more on its mana cost is um, because it needs because it also needs support. Right, yeah. the other card is good on its own. Yeah, the other and card this... is more likely to kill them on its own. I yeah. think that this will have more trigger implications. Like its abilities on the other one might may or may not be super relevant, right? Oh, yeah. Whereas this will will be in that color. Someone's asking uh, if this is live. It is, uh, and also we do our set reviews over two to three days because um, you know our voice, and we go more in depth as well. Balbasaur. <laughs> and Yanks just talks Pokemon. Uh, so I, mean, I like this still at a four. You really, think, you really think we would record and leave in somebody speaking Pokemon? I'm not editing it out. I'm not rewatching this. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. I still like this as a, at, a, uh, at a four, because I'm happy to play this late. I think it's a great rate. If you ever get to cast this on three, your opponent will be very, very sad. All right. Jukai Naturalist, a 2-2 two, two for 2. It's an enchantment monk with lifelink. It's a bear with lifelink. Sounds great. And enchantment spells cost one less to cast, which is all of your sagas and all of your creatures that are enchantments, which works very well in these colors. Green has so many enchantments. This card is awesome. 
Yeah, green seemed like every other card was an enchantment, if not more than that. Um, so, this in a way, because of how many enchantments there are in green, this is a mana dork. It doesn't fix for green, but like you, ha you have a green to play this, right? So this is going to ramp you into all of those sagas and all of those enchant creatures. It's going to ramp you into that giant flying turtle or whatever it is you want to do. Um, green I fixes mean, it well. In the right deck, it's better than a mana dork because yeah. it's producing two, three, four mana a turn. Yep. In addition to being a bear with lifelink, which is already good, which is way better than, you know, a mana dork. So I think this is a 3-5 with some pretty heavy snowball abilities. Agreed. All right. Hey, Planeswalker. Planeswalker. Uh, we have a three mana, three loyalty Planeswalker that has a static ability at the beginning of your end step. Uh, if this has entered the battlefield, this turn, phase it out. Okay. Um... Plus one draw a card, and then discard a card unless you attacked this turn. Great. Um, and then create a 1-1 one, one blue ninja creature token with this creature can't be blocked. That can end a game, certainly. And then you get an emblem. It's really hard to read that small. It's uh, You get an emblem with whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, search your library for a blue or black creature card, put it into the battlefield, and then shuffle. Okay, that's good. I don't think we're ever getting that far in limited. Like, I feel like if we've drawn cards and made one ones for long enough that like, okay, we're probably just gonna be killing them. But it's still a very good clause in long drawn out games if your opponent has key removal spells to hit like your one ones and stuff. Yeah, I this is an Go ahead. this is an interesting version of the whole like can it protect itself? I mean, yeah, it can make a one one, but that mostly is just gonna chump, which is relevant. But the first turn at least, it protects itself by disappearing. Yes, if you've attacked, which most of the ninja decks should be no. attacking. No, it just always phases out as long as you played it this turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was the discard a card unless you've attacked. Yep. I missed. Up, I, I mixed up my, my triggers on that one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, this Planeswalker is good. It's slow value, but it's going to win a game if left alone. The other two, I think, were stronger as far as immediate impact. This is slower impact, but still game winning. Yeah. And I think one one lesson I think most people have hopefully learned by now is never underestimate three mana planeswalkers. Certainly. I think this is a four or five. Yep, yeah, agreed. All right, the Kami War. We got one in Wooburg. Uh, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls. Return up to one other target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, and then each opponent discards. Exile Saga and return it to to the battlefield and it comes back as a 6-6 six, six. uh it is made of all colors it flies it tramples it flamples whenever uh the, all of this text attacks defending player chooses a non-land card from your graveyard return that card to your hand uh, it gets plus x plus o until end of turn where x is the mana value of that card yeah that's a lot of uh, of stuff Yes, it's very, very powerful. Am I going to be casting this in my limited matches? No. No, I mean, my goal will be to cast this once in this format. Um, but you shouldn't be putting it in your deck as much fun as it is. Um, did we see, like, most of the green fixing and stuff went and got, most of the ramping and stuff got forests. The mana dorks created forests. They didn't create mana of any color, which we sometimes do see. So, like, eh. There are some of oh uh, we could we could have the red dragon that gives you treasures and there was another dragon that let you get three lands or something. Green dragon. The yeah. Green so dragon if we have red you... dragon and green dragon and we're gruel, we can splash. Probably not. Sci not not a card. Pick it up. It's probably worth some money to some EDH players. Yeah, I mean that's only three mythics. That's not that hard. <laughs> fair. And yeah. If you, if you have them. Wrapped. To be fair, you only need the two because this will be passed. Exactly. Um, I'll let you read this one. <laughs> Kotosi the Silent Spider, three blue black for a four four human legendary human ninja. When Kotosi the Silent Spider enters the battlefield, exile target card other than a basic land from an opponent's graveyard. Search that player's graveyard, hand, and library for any number of cards with the same name as that card in exile. Then that player shuffles. For as long as you control Kotosi, you may play one of the exiled cards, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast it. Okay, so this so is reasonably limited. They're probably not having copies of because you're probably exiling their best card from their graveyard. 
but you get that card, so it's card advantage. You get, you get informa hand information, which is spicy, and deck information for that matter. Fuck it. Like, just take your time, look at every single thing, and find out what do you need to play around from there on out. That's awesome. Um, you can remove artifacts that they need to get back if there's a lot of great, you know, graveyard synergy here with artifacts and vehicles. Uh, yeah, this card to me is a home run. Yeah, now you do have this thing has to still be in play in order to get that. Certainly true, but I do feel like getting their best card after turn five or later is, um, if it stays on the board, that's game winning. Yeah, it can be. I mean, sometimes their best their best thing in the yard on turn five is going to be a two drop. Yeah, sometimes, but that's also paired with all of the knowledge and stuff you're getting as well for checking their decks. Yeah. So you and I guess if you're getting like a two drop or three drop, there's more of a chance they have multiples. Yeah. And obviously, you know, the downside of this is it's a five mana four four that's going to eat a premium removal and give you 100% hand information, which is a pretty solid card on its own. And if you happen to get something even as small as a two two, we're in business. Uh, this feels okay, like a solid four to me. Okay, hear me out here. Oh, God, I don't know. I don't know if I want to. You have an opponent who, for some reason, is playing the Kami War, and you make them discard it, and then you get that out of the graveyard. And you can play it for any color. You don't have to worry about the Wooburg. I see. <laughs> That's what we're playing? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're relying on our opponent being bad. <clears throat> yeah, and, How do we and, make them and, discard yeah, it? There's discard spells. The, the ninja that, when it attacks, uh, they can discard it. They're going to discard that because they're never going to be able to cast it. And what color is that ninja? Black. Okay, well, at least it's on color. I was, like, in the back of my mind really hoping it was green. I know you were. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, this card's a four. Moving on. <laughs> We've got our Orzhov Lord, a four, four for five mana. Whenever uh, this enters the battlefield or attacks, if you control an artifact and an enchantment, create a 2-2 two, two white vigilant samurai. Uh, so it's playing nicely with Samurais, but it's also playing nicely with the Orzhov combo of enchantments and uh, artifacts. So it's kind of a weird card. I feel like this is not a well-supported archetype and likely something we want to be splashing. Can I splash the Samurai 3-4 and this in my black, red, or my white, red Samurai decks, please? Sure. Why not? Oh, I'm, bu I'm busy coming up with other ways to get the Kami War into play. Okay, Yanks has, Yanks has gone home for the day. <laughs> Moving brilliant, bro on. Brilliant Restoration is my next one. Oh, now you like that card. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, see, Hammy is upset. Hammy knows you are full of shit. Um, um, <laughs> you guys didn't see why. You should, you should totally go watch it. Um, okay, I'm going to give this card a four. I feel like if we're playing it, that synergy's there, we're likely going to get to trigger it. If you're not going to get to trigger it, don't splash it. Also, black-white is not an ideal archetype, I think, in this. So we'll see. And if it is, you probably have the synergies anyway. So I'm going to say this is a four, 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 five mana that's going to give you some bodies. Yeah, I'm a little lower on this. I kind of think it's like a three to a three, five, because the upside just really isn't that great. A 4-4 four, four, and a 2-2 two, two for 5 is above rate, but it's not amazing. It's in, ad in addition, it's a samurai token, which I think is going to be super relevant. It's the most relevant creature type we've seen in a long time. If you're playing it in red-white. Yeah, like even, I mean, there was it. enough samurai support in just white alone. Yeah, but you probably haven't been prioritizing them if you're just black-white. I mean, incidentally, most things were just, they just seem to be white, like warriors and stuff anyway. And I don't know how many there are, uh, samurais and warriors are in black, but I'm sure there's some. And, yeah, that, and uh, that's assuming you don't trigger this multiple times. True. The whole idea of it is if a, uh, so the thing that makes the four is if it's a bomb that can win the game if left alone. So if it's left to continue to do this process, is it going to be game winning? Probably. Yeah. All right, we have a Colt Anvil to, uh, to land for a artifact. Whenever one or more artifact you control leaves the battlefield during your turn, create a 1-1 one, one colorless construct artifact creature token. This ability triggers only once each turn. 
pay one, sacrifice an artifact. It deals one damage to each opponent, and you gain one life. So this is interesting, right? Because we've seen a lot of cards that recur artifacts. And this triggers the construct when any time, even if you don't sacrifice using this ability. And then once you've kind of reached this critical mass, you can sack multiple times for each artifact that you draw. You sack for two drain, basically. Um, well, it's a tap ability, so you can only do it once a turn. Yes, but I'm, I'm saying it's a, it's a long-term engine, right? Like you're making a treasure token, sacking it, making a making a little attacker dude. Whether or not it can attack is irrelevant. Then you could, if need be, you could just sack it, do it again, and it does. Yeah, you don't. It it feeds itself. Yeah, you just keep sacking the tokens over and over again. Yep. Um, but that's also it's, you're not getting much out of that. I think the bigger issue is that a lot of the other mechanics wanted you to be sacrificing. So now this is now generating every time I sacrifice to give a creature plus two plus one or sacrificing. I think there was a couple other ones that seemed really good that you actually liked. And I said, I didn't think we we're going to have enough artifacts to make it worth it with cards like this, giving us another bonus in addition and enabling those sack outlets even more seems pretty relevant. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think this card's pretty bad. <laughs> I think it has a home in exactly one deck, and I'm happy to play a one of this in that deck. But yes, it is not going to be playable in most. I think it's like a one, two, five. Yeah, I like that. Uh, yeah, true. But believe me, I was not arguing that this was a great card. Sure. Um, <laughs> but it is a pretty neat engine that can do some pretty good damage with you know, paired with other cards that are already sacking your artifacts and already bringing them back. Prodigy's Prototype. We have a three mana, three, four vehicle that whenever one or more vehicles you control attacks, create a one, one colorless pilot uh, creature token that this creature cruise vehicle, it cruise for two. And this is a crew two as well. So it kind of, you know, fuels itself, which is kind of neat. You have to crew it up with a two, two for two, which is fine. We probably played one of those on turn two anyway, uh, attack with this on four. Uh, and then it makes another crew token. We then crew it and get to attack with the other creature. So it kind of snowballs nicely and makes some one ones. Yeah. This... And the pilot, the pilot you make can crew up to three, um, which is nice. It crews up to three. In what way? It's, it's power word two greater, not as if it's power word two. So it's a one one that crews for three. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't read it that. My brain, my brain did not read that. That's not natural. Uh, yeah, it's the same. There's some cards in white that are like that, and they're really awkward to read. I don't know if there's a. There must not be a better way to word this from a rules perspective. Did the other pilots but... do the same thing? Because I thought the other pilots crewed as though they were one higher. Um, I'm scrolling back. Uh, the the white, the two one white is as though its power were two greater. Okay, so I just totally misread that mechanic in the first time and re misread it this time as well. Uh, okay, there were a lot of crew three uh vehicles, so that's super relevant and a huge mistake. Um, in in my calculation, even on those back ones. So when I actually write these up for cool stuff, I will probably go back and adjust those a little bit because that's a pretty big difference that the one ones created can actually crew the other half of the vehicles. Because there's a fair at X3, right? Uh, you have to look for crew three, but... I think um, there was a few. There was definitely a couple. Yeah. Um, uh, that said, I think this is well above rate. I'm pretty happy. It makes more bodies, and it attacks very well for a three drop. So I am giving this... What are you thinking? Uh, I think this is a three five. Yeah, I think this is a good three five. And exactly what I want to be doing in those two colors. Absolutely. All right, Storm's Edge, a four mana, three, three with first strike. When uh, ever a samurai or warrior you control attacks alone and tap it, if it were the first combat this phase of the turn, there is an additional combat. Woo, yeah, buddy. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> um. One of the things I want to mention, guys, and I was going to talk about this a little bit more at the end, but... There is more Boros multicolor cards than like any other color pairing. So Hi. just being in that color pairing is going to be make it more likely that you're going to just happen to open something relevant, right? Yeah, there are three Boros rares. Uh, and the, plus the signpost uncommon, which is definitely more than it is. Plus both of the three color ones we've seen so far 
yeah. have Boros in them. Uh, one of uh, them didn't, right? The, like the big was, that, was, that was Jeskai, so that had Boros in it. Oh, it you're right, you're right, you're right. Red, blue, yeah. Yeah, so every, yeah, white, red in general is just very well supported. And it opens the doors for a lot of splashing. Some great uh, three color cards on there as well. So you could splash the blue, you could splash the black, and just have access to a lot more stuff. I'm... I'm really hoping this doesn't isn't as strong as I think it's going to be. Oh, look, another Boros card. All right, we have a three mana three three with haste. It says uh, whenever this commander deals combat damage to a player, if it doesn't have an indestructible counter on it, put an indestructible counter on it. Cause why not? Uh, whenever combat damage is dealt to you, remove indestructible counter from this. Okay. That's uh. It's a weird card. Um, three mana, three three haste means there's a pretty good chance it gets in on that first turn and gets indestructible, which is nice. And if they can't That's... attack you back, like if you're on the play, yeah. this is incredibly difficult to deal with because their first requirement is not to attack you. Their requirement is to uh, remove this. And uh, also, if you're curving out, which a samurai deck should be doing, you should be pretty creature heavy. You're going to be able to block on the way back, so it's not going to be a super easy trade. And if they do attack you, you're likely going to be uh, having the door open to just stack back and get another thing and you'll win the samurai race ultimately which is pretty neat and if they get indestructible on this and you start to tr trigger on some abilities it's gonna be tough to deal with yeah um I'm, i don't know i'm having trouble getting a feel for this card as to how it's actually gonna it's, play out um, on its own in a vacuum in any given situation i don't think it's like insane but I think it just, it's yet another awesome thing that synergizes very well with what Samurai is doing. There's so much support here that all of the cards will just play very smoothly. Yeah, I mean, certainly a good card. 3 mana, 3 3 haste that sometimes is indestructible. That alone is great. I think it's a 3 5 in any yeah. given situation, but it's going to play very strong if you are in the driver's seat and have Samurais. Agreed. So I can see this being a game-winning four in the right deck. All right. Uh, two, four for three mana, legendary creature, human ninja. Whenever you activate a ninjutsu ability, well, we talked about there being no ninjutsu abilities, but here we are. It's rare, of course, so kind of irrelevant. Uh, uh, look up to, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of the library in any order. This Ability triggers only once per turn, and each creature in your hand has ninjutsu four. Hmm. And this card seems pretty great. Agreed. Um, I was about to say, you know, you need some ninjutsu support, but not really, because all your creatures now have it. Yeah. Um, you know, so you just get to draw the best card out of your top three. I mean, that's going to snowball pretty quickly. Agreed. Uh, it's going to be a lot of value. Honestly, a 2-4 for four, 3 mana is a pretty good rate, too. I think yeah. this card is solid. Uh, the, the issue being is that if left alone, <clears throat> it doesn't do anything if you're kind of at even or behind, heaven forbid. Um, so does it win a game if left alone? Sometimes. As long, as long as you have something that can attack, you know, and get through. Yeah, you need like the Which, little 1 1 evasive flyer or something like that. Sometimes this could just be a do nothing. It's probably the lowest floor and highest ceiling, high, higher ceiling. Uh, yes and no. I mean, I think the same thing about the last card, right? Sometimes it's just a 3 3 that can't attack or ever do anything. But it's a 3-3 three, three for 3, which, you know, and a Samurai, which is, even if it doesn't get indestructible, still doing what that deck wants to be doing, is just attacking with a good size body for the mana rate, getting the trigger bonuses from the other Samurais. Uh, whereas this, you just yeah. might not be able to get in. Sure, but what we, what you just said, right, it implies that you have the other Samurai. Here, this implies that you have other creatures to help it. But those creatures aren't necessarily getting in. Sometimes they're 1-3s, sometimes they're whatevers, whereas that creature you want to be attacking. It's just doing that. Um, this means you need to be attacking and not being blocked, which I feel like is less controllable than just attacking. Much higher variance. This creature is easier to block than the 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, I mean, this creature's likely not getting in on its own. 
And uh, I don't know, maybe we have the Planeswalker to boot. That makes a 1-1 one -one unblockable. But then you ninjutsu it and you lose it. That sucks. Honestly, it just feels like the... Is it a common, do you think, Yanks? What? The 1-1 one -one flyer for 1 in blue. Let me look. I believe it is, but I'll have to look. If that's a common and you pick this up early, it's not going to be hard to build around, and this card will be an absolute house. Um... I don't even see it. Now I can't even find it. <laughs> oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's a common. Yeah, that being a common is crazy good. Um, Old Wolf says giving everything Nujitsu is a uh, minor upside. I think it's a fair amount of upside. Um, I think this is an insanely snowbally card. Um, you could just whack people with absurd amounts of damage. Even if you're not getting to draw a card, if you replay like the one one and then you get to hit them for six and then you just replay the one one, you get to hit them for four. Like it doesn't matter how big their ground is. You could just win that way. Um, yeah, my only concern is that just sometimes I'm going to play this and be kind of sad. You know what this feels like to me, Yanks? It feels kind of like the blue gods from Theros. Was it Theros? No, call time, I think is what you're thinking of. Call time, yeah. Where it like... The, the, the value was kind of incremental and a little slower, and if you were behind, they felt really bad, and they didn't do what you wanted them to do, but if you got out ahead and you had the leeway, then they just obliterated people. And that's what this feels like to me. Yeah, I agree. It's not a great card when you're behind. Rating-wise, it's not affecting the board the turn it comes in, so it can't be a 5. Yeah. Do we think this is a 4-5? I'm I'm kind of leaning towards four. Uh, unless, yeah, so am I. that's what I think. It's I think it's a four. Unless you build around it. Yeah. Yeah, some sort of combination of evasive threats and ETB stuff you want to re-trigger. I, I was willing to lean towards four or five with how how much in love with it you were. No. Yeah. yeah, I. The funny thing is, is the last card we were talking about was also a four, which makes some sense because I feel like that card is a four all the time, where this feels like a three or a five, right? Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Yeah. All right, we have the living one, one three for two mana, human druid. Uh, you could tap, put a lore counter on a saga you control, activate as a sorcery. Uh, when the living whatever dies, choose up to one, return target saga or enchantment card, creature card you control to its owner's hand. It's not from the graveyard? No, it just lets you, like, re-trigger, I guess. I don't know. It's but this great. has to die, so, like... Well, the second one lets you at least get the saga, get a saga back. Return target saga card from your graveyard to your hand. That's what I expected the first one to say, and I kind of, yeah. like, was like, wait, the, how does this work? My issue with bouncing a saga when it dies is that, like, it could just... They, they just won't attack you on the premium time to trigger it. Yep. Or they just won't block you, because it's only one power... So the second line here seems most important. Yeah, I mean, I guess it helped. You know, the first line is some nice flexibility. Like if you have one of your enchantment creatures under the pacifism effect, you know, it's just a nice bonus. But yeah, I think you're mostly going to be using the second ability here. Yeah, the blue enchantment ones didn't seem very good. There was one good white one, if I'm not mistaken. Um... It's kind of interesting that to some, to some extent, this is worse in this set than in previous sets with Sagas, because those Sagas always went straight to the graveyard. Agreed. Here, sometimes they're just still sitting on the battlefield. Yeah. That is certainly true. I'm trying to it. Yeah, it's, it's flexible. It's a two drop. It's a one, three for two that maybe you want to put a lower counter on your Saga. Maybe you don't. It's also... Not an enchantment, which I would have thought to have seen in this colors. Um, I mean, I'm sure this is a split card, but I feel like the we could just give this an average rating, which it doesn't feel super great. No, I think this is like a probably like a two five maybe. Um, it definitely with upside. Um, but you need to have good sagas for it to have, upside, have to get there, not just any saga. I wish it said return target enchantment from your graveyard. <sighs> Then I would yeah. just be on board to just give this a three because it's kind of nice. It's a curve filler that like, but if you don't have Sagas in your deck, does this do anything? Yeah. Is is this 
anything more than a vanilla one three? Uh, not. I mean, I guess if there's, I'd have to look. If there's enchantment creatures with ETBs, you can retrigger them. Like the, you know, I know this is off color, but like the Gloom Shrieker, you know, about to get something else back from your graveyard, you could bounce it and replay it. You could, re that. you could retrigger the ETB auras. I don't remember what the green um, one kind of sucked. I don't know what the white you, one did. You, you can't, you can't get back auras. <laughs> Yeah, return target saga or enchantment you control. Enchantment creature you control. Ha ah, ha, poop. Okay, well, I tried real <laughs> hard to make this good. It was it was not. I think this is like a two. I don't even want to give it a three. It, like, the scenarios where it seems good is just so minor. Like, how many sagas are we realistically running? Like, yeah, you had to not... have played one, it had to have turned into a creature, and then it had to have died before this two drop dies. Yeah, I, I think I've got it like a 2-5 just because in green there were a lot of enchantment creatures, some of which did have some ETB effects. Um, so you could re-trigger those and a bunch of sagas. But yeah, it's not great. I'm going to give it a 2. If you have those synergies, then we'll talk. Silver Fur Master, Ninja Lord, 2 mana for a 2-2 two, two Ninjutsu 2. Uh, other ninja uh, Ninjutsu abilities cost 1 less to activate. Okay. Other ninja, uh, ninja and rogue creatures you control get plus one, plus one. I didn't really look out to see if there were rogues that were not ninjas. There were a handful, uh, not a lot, but... Uh, hey, everybody, hel everybody helps. Yeah, I think in black, um, there were a couple. It was not a lot, though. Okay, is this a three? I think so. If you have um, heavy synergies, it's going to be more, but like, I'm just going to assume you have kind of medium synergies. Yeah, I think you can assume if you're playing this card, you're blue-black, you've got some rogues, but or some ninjas, but doesn't mean you've got a ton of them. Yeah, not every ninja deck is going to be a great deck. Yeah. Especially because I think it's one of the favorite archetypes, and the last time we saw ninjas, it was very heavily overdrafted. Oh, when we, at the start of that, this format, that will be extremely overdrafted. Agreed. Uh, yeah, in blue-black, I found three rogues. Someone's asking, do ninja rogues get plus two, plus two? I wish. Uh, not, not Spirit quite. Sisters Call, a five mana enchantment at the beginning of your end step. Choose target permanent card in your graveyard. You may sacrifice a permanent that shares a card type with the chosen card. If you do, return the chosen card from your graveyard to the battlefield and it gains. If this permanent would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. All right, so this is going to be editing the uh, you know weakest card that shares a type into the best thing in your graveyard kind of thing. Um, pretty slow, what do you think, Yanks? It's slow. One thing that is nice in this set is you've got a lot of enchantment creatures and artifact creatures that can double count um, to make it easier to share a type. Yeah, you sack a treasure token, get back an artifact creature. Yeah, or you sack a, some enchantment to get back it. You're able to sack an artifact to get back a creature sometimes or chat it to get back a creature or vice versa sometimes it just gives you a little more flexibility in this set than you'd see in most yeah you certainly um, need a wide range of weak stuff in a particular card type in a wide yeah. range of expensive better things in that card type and then those expensive better things do need to be in the graveyard already which means you've played your bombs and they didn't win and then you have to have these weak things to kind of do it and it's five mana do nothing this feels constructed to me i don't think i'm going to want to build this and i also am just not in love with the uh the color pair yeah and it's not great that white black wants you to have both artifacts and enchantments which just reduces the density of both agree so yeah i think the card is okay i think i'm probably gonna play it in black white but i'm not gonna be taking it early i don't even know that i'll play it all right the last card in the multicolor the tamio mm -hmm. Completed Sage, we have two colorless green and a Simic hybrid uh, Phyrexian mana can be paid for two life and a blue. This is a five mana, five loyalty planeswalker. Uh, and then for plus one, tap up to one target artifact or creature. It doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. And then you can negative exit, uh, exile target non-land permanent card with mana value X or less from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of that card. Okay, seems fine. Uh, and negative seven, create uh, Tamio's Notebook, a legendary colorless artifact. 
token with spells you cast cost two less to cast, and you could tap it to draw a card. Okay, that's a lot of card advantage. Um, so there's a few interesting things with this card. First, also, it introduces a new keyword to the game in, comp in completed. Mm -hmm. um, where so if you pay uh, that hybrid mana with life instead of mana, um, it enters as a three loyalty planeswalker instead of a five. The ultimate being not an emblem, but creating an actual artifact token means it can be interacted with. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to getting an emblem that just like, you know, you cast spells with two less to cast and draw a card on your upkeep or something. And we already uh, talked about how there were multiple yeah. main deckable in, uh, artifact and uh, enchantment removal spells. Yeah. It can uh, protect itself in multiple ways. It can tap something down that's threatening it, or it can exile a creature from your yard and get a token copy of it. Um, so it passes that test. Um, and it can be played on turn four for, you know, for two life. Uh, you know, I like this card. It's not, it's, it does a lot of little things, um, but it's not, I don't, I don't think it's not, it's your typical like five bomb. This feels very four to me. It's again, a lot of slow incremental value. If you like, you know, you play this, you tap their thing down to protect it, and then you play a creature and you get to make a token, right? Now, you, you even if it's like a weak token, because you want to kind of keep its loyalty up, um, we went to six, we go down to, let's say, four. Uh, now we've got two bodies. We can start tapping things down again. It doesn't take too long to get from, you know, four to seven. You make that, that uh, token. That's a pretty powerful thing. Your spells cost two less, plus you get to draw two cards per turn. That's going to steamroll a game over the long term. So if left alone, this will win a game. Yeah, I think I'm probably willing to give it a 4-5, um, just because, I don't know, the, the, the completed adds an interesting factor to this card that Wizards often tends to, when they start introducing new things like this, especially mana reduction, things are more powerful than they seem. <laughs> um, so we, do know, like they, of, they, we do know they like their Simic Planeswalkers. And, yeah, and yeah. now if this was one green-blue and the hybrid, I'd be terrified, because everything you can play for one green-blue is a bomb. For but, sure. Um, I think I've got it at a 4-5, but it's just kind of hedging a little high, because I'm not sure how how much being able to play it for cheaper will affect it. Certainly. I think I'm going to leave it for, for, my, for my personal sake. Is that a four? Yep. Um, you know, I guess. So my biggest concern is oftentimes we say if it leaves a lasting effect on the board, it, you know, it wins the game. So yada, yada, yada. But like, let's say you negative four this, get a four, four, whatever. But then they just, kill it with like a 2-2 flyer or you or you tap the flyer but then they get to hit it with their other thing like it it itself doesn't trade with the thing so the card it makes is still kind of just a one for one doesn't feel super strong because it's dying to those creatures versus trading with them so it feels a little slow to me um all right it is it, it is slow one thing i think is always interesting with planeswalkers is the the gravity they impact on the game like, it turns the game into a sub-game of Kill the Planeswalker, which just often really messes with, you know, your opponent's game plans. Sometimes. Or sometimes I feel like yeah. I have this Planeswalker and it should do a lot, and I just, like, it just saves me a half a turn, which feels bad sometimes. It's kind of like, yeah. play this gain five life. Feels awful. <laughs> Um, all right, guys, that is the end of the multicolor card. For those of you on YouTube, this is the last of the set review. If you guys missed our other videos, make sure you guys go check them out and give us some comments. Let us know your thoughts on the cards. Again, these are for limited, and uh, and we will be doing updates on these cards a few weeks into the set, talking about which cards we were right and wrong about. And also, interestingly enough, this is the set in the last four sets, I think, that Yanks and I have disagreed on the most, and mostly in the last two, two uh, reviews. So we'll discuss those in more depth, as well as go over archetype strength, uh, in future videos. So make sure you guys hit the follow button and come back and see us. Thank you for watching. See you next time.